Hello, everybody, and welcome to our BBL, aka Bigger Better Launch, our monthly workshop where we bring you entrepreneurs on to the show with us so that you can have some high powered strategies that can help you with your business. So I see a lot of people pouring into the room right now. As always, we love to see how many countries people come from and where in the world people are. Some people wake up at like at four in the morning, uh, three in the morning, I think like in Australia, New Zealand, it's about that time right now. Um, I know in like India, uh, Pakistan, that area, it's like 11 at night, maybe midnight. In Europe, it's the, the nighttime. In Hawaii, it's like 7 a.m., 8 a.m. So like where in the world are you guys watching from and what time is it where you guys are at uh well i'm getting ready over here uh carrie and shivali if you want to like call out give some people yeah. some shout outs or some countries here yeah i saw pakistan i i see that pakistan bangladesh i saw serbia greece dominic what, what, what times uh what times are some of these people uh, saying? let's see here france 8 p.m philippines 3 a.m oh my goodness uh, uk that's in military time <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see here uh let's see pakistan went by to poland is 8 p.m vietnam is 2 a.m let's see wow serbia is 8 p.m beijing 3 a.m netherlands i think that's eight o'clock ish um madrid is eight o'clock so wow lots of lots of different time zones people waking up in the middle of the night which is pretty cool i love it i love it all right, guys. Uh, well, we're all here to to learn, you know, to help our businesses, and that's what we do um, every every month when we're when we're on here. So, regardless of where you guys are in the world, um, you know, we're going to take care of you today. So, so thank you guys for for throwing uh, in into the chat here where you guys are from. And I'm just curious, you know, every time we have a lot of first time, uh, what what do you call long time listeners first time callers see uh, uh like just like it is in the radio but let us know uh, guys we're going to throw up a poll right now um how many bbls have you watched i'm just curious here how many bbls have you guys watched out there is this your first time have you listened to i'm wondering is there anybody throw in the chat has anybody been to every single bbl that we've done since um since may that would be crazy we, we got to like give them some, some swag if they've been to every 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 single one zachary snyder said he's been to every one awesome awesome wow. very cool there's also ahmed who said that as well jim is calling from australia 5 a.m he's from brisbane i believe that's the correct pronunciation not brisbane um like <laughs> we might say but brisbane brisbane australia <laughs> All right. Welcome. Uh, thank you for waking up at five in the morning. I appreciate it. All right. Let, let's keep it. Uh, let's keep it moving um, here. And, you know, as always, we do like to send swag to our listeners and watchers out there. So take a selfie uh, of where you're watching this, you know, unless you're driving in the car and listen to this on your phone or something, and then post it to your Instagram story, tag Helium 10 software. You can tag Serious Sellers podcast as well. We will repost it and then our uh, social media queen out there, Cassandra, is going to randomly pick a few of you to send some swag to. So make sure to check your DMs, you know, your 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 spam G, uh, DMs. If in case you're one of the winners, she might be reaching out to you to um, to give uh, uh, to give you to get your address and things like that. And then let's let's uh, get going here. Now, what we do on these uh, bigger, better launches is is every month we we talk about strategies that can help you as as Amazon and Walmart sellers. And then we also let you know the new features that Helium 10 has launched in the last, you know, 30 days or so. And this is important because I know Helium 10 has a lot of features. A lot of you newer people are probably how many? Let me know in the chat. How many were like when they first got into Helium 10 they're like, "Oh my goodness, gracious. Look how many tools there are. Like where do I even start?" right? And we are constantly adding stuff. So then what would happen is in the past, we would talk to people and they'd be like, wait, that exists in Helium 10? I didn't even realize that. You know, So we want to make sure you guys know what are the new things in uh, in Helium 10, all right? So let's just talk about what we did in the last one in November. The first thing uh, we talked about was PPC bid estimates in Cerebro and Magnet. This was very, very popular um, out there. 
um, because we all know how, how many people let, let me know in the chat. How many people have been just like shocked sometimes how different your actual cost per click in PPC is compared to with what Amazon might have recommended to you in the beginning, you know, um, where it says, oh yeah, you need to do 50 cents, but in actuality, it was like 10 cents. You know, a lot of people uh, that happens. So we're like, hey, how can we build something off of what Amazon already provides that would help our sellers have a better idea about how much it would cost to um, uh, to advertise for a certain keyword. And so that's why we, we launched in the tool or diamond and above, I believe, uh, our suggested PPC bid from helium 10. All right. So you can see that here. So hopefully some of you guys have been, have been using that and right off the bat guys, I'm going to give you the first new release of the day. And the first new release of the day is, uh, as of, uh, this week, now in keyword tracker again is a new place where you are going to see these suggested PPC bits. All right. So keyword tracker, you guys are going to uh, see that as well. All right. Um, let's keep it going here. The second thing we launched was x-ray thumbnail downloads. Th there's a lot of you who download our x-ray reports into Excel files. I'm not one of them because I, I just like things visually. I hate Excel sometimes. Like I don't, I don't know how to use it, but a lot of you love using Excel. So we're like, hey, you guys ask for the ability to be able to see the thumbnail of the product so that you don't just have to uh, remember what the ASIN stands for. So that's been available. Hopefully you guys have been able to take advantage of that. We had new Chrome extension graph updates, a lot of cool new things. Like if you look at the, on one chart guys, I, and I hope you're using this, you know, this is for any level, platinum, diamond, elite. When, when you go into Excel and you're looking at the BSR chart, you know, now in the BSR history, you're going to have different tabs where you can see like the review history, the sales history, et cetera. So make sure to take advantage of that that we launched last month. Uh, we have Atomic Advanced Bulk Features. A few of you uh, use Atomic or a lot of you or a lot of you die members use it. And so that was something that was requested. So you can just like make bulk uh, changes to your to your campaigns. Also, we at, we launched Atomic Hourly Analytics for diamond members, all right? Before that was only available to elite. A lot of the stuff we release, guys, you know, we'll first uh, let our elite members play with it so that we can get the bugs out and then we'll we'll go to diamond, uh, et cetera. And so something that was only available to elite members in the beginning, but now is, avail now is available to diamond is the hourly analytics where you can like see how your PPC campaigns are performing on an hourly basis. Like, wow, look at this. My A cost skyrockets to 80% at 8 a.m. Mm, maybe I need to like pause my campaigns from 8 to 9 a.m. because I just am not profitable for whatever reason, right? You never could do stuff like this on Amazon before. And then thankfully, Amazon made it available uh, to have this data. And now it's available in Atomic. Uh, another thing that we launched last um, uh, last month was Atomic Schedules. So that, that's like the secondary part of looking at the hourly analytics and now you take action and so like here for example you can see like hey two uh 2 a.m let's go ahead and pause our campaigns until three all right so you you can now do that in atomic for uh dime members uh, with a certain spend and above uh next thing we launched was our exit ticket program all right. So this is for diamond members and above because exit exiting your business might not be you know if you're barely starting on Amazon or and in Helium 10, you might not be thinking about yet an exit or or maybe selling your business yet. But once you're, you know, once you've been selling on Amazon for a while, you've built it up and you've got, you know, you've got a diamond or elite account, it might be something to start thinking about. So for diamond and elite members, you guys since last month have had access to our exit ticket training program. Let me know, diamond and elite members who are in the chat right now, um, how many of you guys um, how many of you guys are using, are using that ha have gone through exit ticket? Let me know. We, we have over 1000 students in the first, uh, in the first month. And so let me know if you guys have started going through this, uh, course, it's really important that you guys start learning about the potential exit, because a lot of people don't realize potentially the most money you'll ever make from an Amazon business is the day you exit. You know, some people make seven, uh, eight even higher uh, eight figure um, kind of paydays, I guess you could say, by exiting their Amazon 
uh, business. All right. So make sure to get into this uh, course. Um, now let's uh, keep it going. There's one more uh, thing that we uh, launched, which was uh, Cerebro historical data. All right. Cerebro historical data was something that I have been wanting for years. All right. This is probably to me the most game changing uh, the most game changing thing that we have launched in a long time where, you know, like, let's say you guys are, are trying to do some keyword research for beach balls or something like that. Now, right now, beach balls might be popular in Australia for, for our, our guest who is from Brisbane, right? Because it's, it's summertime in, in Australia, if I'm not mistaken. But the problem is, um, is that in America, like it's freezing. Like I'm here in Southern California. I know you people who are in cold, uh, in cold weather places are going to make fun of me, but it is freezing here, even though it's been like in the forties and fifties, that's like super cool for somebody in Southern California. I live very near to the beach here uh, in San Diego. Nobody's going to the beach and nobody, uh, almost nobody is buying uh, beach balls at this time because it's so, so cold, right? So if I were to do keyword research now in Cerebro about all the you know search volumes and which products are ranking and things like that for the beach ball niche. Well, it, it's not really going to be very accurate for what are the top keywords and what are the top search volumes for the summertime, right? So that's why we launched a historical data inside of Cerebro where you can now take a look back at, hey, as of a certain month, what what was this product ranking for? As of a certain month, what were the top keywords with search volume? And this is just something that no other tool has ever even thought of to come out with. And we, we, our product team just, just crushed it with this one. So for those of you um, who have access to this, the elite members, I hope you guys have been using this. It was, it is one of the most amazing things we've ever launched. So that brings us to now December. You know, what do we have? Cooking for December. How um, is Helium 10 getting bigger? How are we getting better? Uh, what are we launching this month? But not only that, we want to make sure that you, the Amazon and Walmart sellers, are getting bigger, are getting better, and launching more products. And so this this oh, December BBL, more than any other one, it is going to be jam-packed, guys, with actual uh, strategies of existing tools. We're not just going to be talking about the new stuff that Helium 10 has come out with. We want to make sure that you guys are ready for 2023 as far as being able to crush 2023 with some amazing sales. And so with that, we're going to be giving you guys some strategies that you can do right now to make sure that you are set for next year and having a lot of great sales. So let's go ahead and turn it over to Carrie with the first uh, a few of these strategies. What's the first one you got for us? Well, I'm actually really excited. I kind of started out with one of my absolute favorite strategies. And I think it's one of my favorites because it's made me a lot of money. And uh, so I'm excited to talk to you guys about this one. So this is how to find the exact PPC campaign strategy for a competitor. So um, what you want to do, this is pretty simple, is you're going to take an ASIN of your biggest competitor and you'll take that ASIN, you're going to put it into Cerebro, you're going to do a reverse ASIN search, and then you'll see a bunch of results. Now, you only want to do one ASIN at a time for this so that you can see that competitor's strategy, okay? So in this particular case on the screenshot, we see that this this uh, competitor has only 21 sponsored keywords. So we can go ahead and assume that that's probably an exact match Um uh, campaign. So those are probably the exact keywords that they've chosen to to target. So those are going to be some really, really good keywords. Now, I have done this for uh, what I always do is I choose my biggest competitor that I'm like, okay, they're making more sales than me. And I want to see how I can capitalize on some of the sales. And when I took a look at one of my competitors, I noticed that they were targeting a lot of um, brand names of like other third party seller, not big brand names, but other third party seller brand names. And they were doing pretty well on that. So I decided to copy that exactly. I did a video campaign the first month I started doing this and I made 15,000 on that on that campaign. So it's actually a really beneficial strategy if you take a look at what other people are doing. Um, all you need to do is do that again, reverse ASIN search for the one ASIN. You'll take a look at the sponsored rank column and you can sort by sponsored rank. So that is absolutely one of my favorites. And I hope you guys try that out and just take a look and maybe add it to uh, one of the things you do for your strategies. So uh, the next one is how to see which organic keywords your competitors are beating you on. So this is another thing where you're like, okay, I'm, 
I'm, you know, doing all the things I'm, I'm optimizing my campaign. I want to know why certain competitors are making more sales and how can I capitalize on some of those sales or how can I start to, you know, win in the areas where they're beating me? So, um, what you're going to do is usually what I do is I'll take the top, you know, you can, if you're an elite member, you can actually do 20 of these ASINs at a time. Um, but if you're diamond, I think it's 10 and then I think it's a little bit less for platinum, but, um, you'll want to make sure that your ASIN is first in line. So if you see, um, in the top, the, the first ASIN is BO9 HM, that's where you're going to want to have your ASIN. Okay. Cause you're going to compare yourself to your competitors. Okay. And you copy all those in, you get those keywords and you're going to put some filters in the first filter. I always do is just, you know, a minimum of 500 search volume. Um, and then that's just to get some, you know, good amount of search volume. And then I focus on the relative rank. So the relative rank, I kind of think of it as a race. So it's where you stand in you know, comparison to your competitors in this race of, you know, ranking on Amazon. So the relative rank, um, basically what this means, if I put a minimum of five, that means that I'm basically fifth in line and uh, I've got at least four of my competitors beating me. So I want to see, you know, who's beating me on this keyword. So I put a minimum of five, you can do, you know, different numbers in there, depending on how many ASINs you put in there, but I put a five there. Um, So then the results um, we can see on the next slide, um, We basically can see, you know, some potential uh, keywords where my competitors are beating me in the ranks and maybe I can focus on them a little bit more. So, for example, goth shelf and gothic shelf. Um, I'm fifth in line. My competitors are beating me on those. There's not as many keyword sales, but, um, you know, definitely every little bit counts and you want to make sure to capitalize on as much as you can. Something else I want to note is uh, you'll probably notice that the columns don't look exactly like they do when the, you automatically do a search. You can actually move the columns around in Cerebro, and I always like to move them based on what I'm looking at. So you can just click and drag them. Uh, so that's why the you know the relative rank, I was able to pull it all the way over to right next to the search volume right there. So um, that's a great way to find you know where your competitors are beating you. All right. So the next one is... Um, how to find keywords that have page one results and have um, and if you have the keyword in the title. So um, basically, you want to find some of those keywords where you know they're you know got some good search volume, maybe some good keyword sales, but nobody else has that keyword in your t- in the title. And the reason for that is because if you put it in your title, you can easily rank for that kind of keyword. So what we're going to do in this filtering is. We're going to do a maximum title density of three. And that basically means that a maximum of three competitors have this exact phrase in their in their actual title. And then the advanced rank, um, minimum one, and then advanced rank filter one to 50. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide here. Uh, and this is what it shows. So you can find a bunch of different keywords. So I found witchy home decor, um, and that has 135 keyword sales. And only two competitors actually have that in their, in their title. So that's a, you know, potentially a good thing to put in your, um, in your, in your title, because, you know, coffin shelf could be kind of witchy home decor, you know, a little bit of a stretch, but then there's also coffin bookshelf, um, only two people, um, there's some great ones in there. So, um, that's a great way to find maybe some opportunity keywords where, you know, there's a lot of, you know, page results of your competitors, but, um, they don't have the actual phrase in their title. I see here Elizabeth said, OMG, this is amazing. What about the rest of you guys? Are you guys following along here? I don't want you just to be like sitting there and trying to do something else or there's no World Cup games on right now. Is I don't, yeah, no, the World Cup hasn't, the uh, finals hasn't started yet. So, so yeah, I want you guys to be focused on this and writing, taking notes down uh, because th- these are stuff that you guys can actually incorporate right now. Um, Right now, like this is not, you know, the stuff that she's showing here, this is not something that's only for elite members or only for diamond members. This title density is is very unique uh, and it's a great tip, guys. This is, uh, I hope you understood that. Does does everybody understand? Let me know. This is a pop quiz. Who can tell me out there why what Carrie just mentioned is so important? Like, why does it matter about how many people on page one have that keyword in their title like why should we as amazon sellers care about that anybody know and anybody been using that on their own let me know in the uh in the chat either my yumi simran stephanie Brittany, who can tell me why this is so important um alicia says if you're there the sales could be yours lane says most consumers don't go past page one uh a as in says because there are less competitors uh, some of this, guys, is true, but you guys know nobody has mentioned the 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 most important the most important one, 
Um, and that is that the way the Amazon algorithm works is they put it puts so much emphasis on what keywords you have in the title. So if I find a keyword using this exact method that Carrie just showed you, where, you know, like, for example, what, what's one of the ones here? Oddities decor. One person on page one has another title. If I had a product that was kind of like an oddities decor kind of thing, I, I really don't think that there's a such thing as this, but let, let's just pretend that it does. And I had oddities decor in my title almost from day one of when I launched the product. It could be that I'll already be on page one. I've never maybe even done a PPC campaign or a sale. That's how powerful it is to find keywords uh, in your niche that are highly relevant where almost nobody else has in your title. But this is just an example. I just wanted to call this out and make sure that you guys understand how powerful these tactics that Carrie is bringing you. So uh, go ahead, uh, Carrie, and, and keep going here. I think some people were saying ranking juice. So some people did get it, but it was going by Excellent. so fast. So to those people, good job. <laughs> All right. So I guess we can go to the next one. Okay. So um, this is actually a black box strategy, um, and this is how to find highly searched terms with criteria that might indicate demand. So when you're doing some product research, I usually like to take a look at keywords when I'm doing product research, because that is what's showing you know, people are searching. And then also you want to take a look at revenue, you know, to make sure people are actually buying on that keyword. So these are some of the filters that we put into black box. So black box, you'll go to the keywords tab. And I put in a search volume about 5,000 to 8,000, which is going to show some a good amount of search. So people are actually searching this uh, particular term. And the monthly revenue is a minimum of 4,000. So that means there's actually make, you know some good sales on this, um, this keyword. Uh, the price between 15 and 55, um, that's a pretty big range. Sometimes I like to go even higher, like 30 to 60, 30 to 70, um, just for you know higher margins. Um, and then the review count, uh, maximum of 200, you want to see, you know, products that aren't in the thousands and thousands of reviews, because those are going to be very competitive to, to get in and, and compete with. And then word count, I always put a minimum of two because those one word searches really, there's not a lot of conversion on those. So usually like to do at least two words, the long tail ones are usually better, the more relevant they are. And then I went ahead and searched kitchen and dining. Okay. So um, on the next page, we got some results. I I actually, there were quite a few results, but I, I just chose some that um, we you know could potentially take a look at for selling. And one is charcuterie cups, which I didn't even know existed. Uh, so that's something that's got a lot of you know search volume and, and some good demand. And then a pickle jar with strainer flips. So uh, you know, sometimes you think that maybe some of the kitchen and dining things that maybe you can't get in there, but there are usually opportunities. And that's one of the ways that you can find it using keyword demand um, and also just making sure that there's that revenue combined with it. So Blackbox is a, a very, very powerful tool to finding those opportunities. I'll go ahead and switch it over to uh, Shivali. I think she has some great new stuff to show us. All right, hopefully you can hear me okay and you can see my screen. I'm currently doing a live share of a segment that we started last month. So we started a new live Market Tracker 360 segment where we created a market and now we're sort of tracking that market. You definitely have your OG Market Tracker, but you also now have Market Tracker on steroids, which is Market Tracker 360 for those of you that have really been selling and, and you're doing really large numbers. So last month we created a market which was around christmas trees we inputted four keywords which was the artificial christmas tree artificial christmas tree with lights christmas tree and christmas trees plural you can build a market based off what you see fit you can add up to 15 keywords unlimited asins you can make a hybrid market if you would like as well as mark those products as your own now we only did a keywords-based market, and we did keep dynamic tracking on for this. So that means that it will use this these keywords to find additional products for us that we want that are entering our market or leaving potentially. So let's go ahead and open up the artificial Christmas tree market that we originally had. And right now, this is unfiltered. A couple things we had talked about originally were the filtering basics, so how you can really Everything that you are seeing on this page is going to be filtered by the date range that you select, as well as the filter criteria. Now, I could save something as a filter preset, which is what I did. 
And I'm going to go ahead and apply that filter preset. Before, you know, you had a different insights board, a different market share. And as soon as I apply mid-tier range Christmas tree filters, which we selected 3P sellers only, price ranged around $50 to $100, and the product title contains Christmas tree. Shivali there in North Carolina has just uh, lost her internet, <laughs> I guess. Anybody else? She'll be back in a second here. But I'm, I'm going to take over um, the screen share back okay, until she gets back here. Hold on just a quick second. Let me take this screen share back from her until she comes back. And do I have it? There we go. All right, cool. So let me know in the chat, uh, Market Tracker 360. You know, I, uh, this is a tool that I think a lot of you larger sellers, those of you who said that you're a larger seller, should definitely be you be considering you know getting into because of course you know for the newer sellers and and even you know like you know mid seven figures the regular helium 10 is absolutely you know giving you enough information that you need uh but once you get to a certain level you know you guys need that extra bit of information um and and his, especially on the historical sales data that that you know maybe newer sellers or sellers um that are just starting out might not need. So that's what uh, Shivali here is demonstrating, which is, is this market tracker 360 tool. So I, I know sometimes people get confused. They're like, wait a minute, I don't see this in my dashboard. I don't have access to this. This is this is our kind of separate function for you high-level sellers out there. So I think you're back now, Shivali. Can you go ahead and- yes. uh, Yeah, uh, sorry about that. No worries. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the weather, I presume. <laughs> But hopefully you caught the overall uh, recap that I did for what we did last month, which was the filtering basics, how we created that market, and then the insights board. Today, what we're going to kind of go into is the overall market chart, which is supposed to help you kind of just have a more granular view of the market that you are looking at. So this means that right now, while we're looking at the mid-tier Christmas trees, you can see that we have this grouped by the last six months. And then when you are taking a look at the overall market chart, you'll see that in the last, last six months, revenue has obviously increased because we are closer to Christmas time. And as that season is coming to an end, it's starting to, that decline. If you were to have it grouped by none, it's really going to show you that overall health line, that trend line of that health of the specific niche you're looking at. If you broke this into different groups, so you have your group by product, your brand, your me versus competitor, seller type, uh, different options really here, that is what's going to determine the value of these lines that you're seeing. So you still have it segmented out by month. If you wanted to switch that into the week or year, or if you want to change how you're digesting this information or see the percentage values, you would be able to do that. This again is going to segment out the revenue grouped by brand. So you can see that Go Plus has really been dominating uh, when it comes to the mid-tier range 3P sellers that are selling Christmas trees. But then if you were to, let's say you expanded these rows to 10, you'll see that my information here changes. So as I go down, the products that you see below this graph are really going to be um, based off of the group by function uh, in the tab format that you have selected. So if I had this by units, it's going to sort it by the total units that have the most going in descending order to the least. Now, let's say we wanted to see how this market is really doing based off last year. So if we're comparing this year to last year, how's it really doing? Well, here you can see that it's actually uh, doing less than it was last year. So there's been a decline in the growth of this market, but this could be attributed to, I mean, you're free to make your own conclusions, but at some point, you know, we had COVID going on, people were shopping a lot more online. And then as these brick and mortars are really starting to open back up, people are shopping for in-person trees again, then you might see that sort of affecting your sales. And so you can kind of extrapolate what you will from this information. But again, you have a lot of different options here. You can group by, again, the revenue by product or units by revenue. It really just depends on how you want to visualize the information and the metrics that are inside your market. If you go down, something that I'm really excited to talk to you guys about is the product analysis pages. So of course we can like click one of these and open up the product analysis page. 
which gives you access to the sales insight. And again, you have access to two boxes, two drop down boxes here that will allow you to see different metrics on the same chart. So how has that revenue compared to the pricing, how it's changed historically speaking, what the listing quality score looks like, the market average comparison, the category and subcategory BSRs and how they have changed over time. Again, this is all going to be applicable based off that date range that we initially selected when doing our filtering basics. At the bottom, now something that's new is our keyword segment inside of these product analysis pages actually has a date range. So now you can actually compare specifically for keywords um, the historical value of it. And then below, you also have top keywords over time. Now, I am going to go a little bit more into detail, but I didn't want to necessarily do it on this page simply because I really like being able to compare multiple ASINs. So when you're inside Market Tracker 360, right? And if I went through and let's say I was only interested in doing six feet uh, artificial Christmas trees that are green specifically. I could go through and select the different six feet green Christmas trees I want to compare and click add to compare. When you do that, you'll see them added at the bottom and then you'll want to click compare. Now I have a preset ASIN list just so I you guys didn't have to wait for it to load, which does not take long at all, but here it is. There are five ASINs here. You have the uh, first one at FBA, the fourth and fifth ones are FBA, the middle two are FBM. But nonetheless, you can see all of that information right next to each other. And what's really cool about this page is some of the most valuable information comes in this keyword comparison format chart. So here you can toggle between organic and sponsored if you'd like. And what you're really looking at is the all keywords are going to show you the highest valued keywords for these ASINs. And the all keywords tab combines the shared keywords as well as the unique keywords. Now, these are going to be sorted by rank initially. And then secondary is the pill that you are currently looking at. So whether that's top search volume, top search volume trends, or top keyword sales, you can really have your picking of what you want to see. If I wanted to go into unique keywords, let's say, then you will see that this information is going to be specific to the ASIN you're looking at. So when you are taking a look at, let's say, Sunny Glade, six feet premium. These are going to be the ones that are unique to that specific ASIN. The shared keywords are going to show you where each of these ASINs are ranking for the keywords that they have overlap on. So right now it's not showing up. So this might just be for some data loading. Um, just give it some time and I promise you it will load up. However, uh, shared keywords is going to show you just how, which keywords are overlapped for all these ASINs and where exactly they're showing up on the pages. Now, what's really interesting is, is we have picked green trees, but take a look at this. For unique keywords, this specific um, Go Plus Christmas tree that's six feet is actually ranking pretty high for white Christmas tree. And if you remember when we were taking a look at the overall market chart, Go Plus was one of the ones that had the most revenue and was really making moves in this niche. So this we wouldn't have necessarily found unless we were taking a look at something like this. So here, let's say that I'm now selling a six feet artificial Christmas tree and I want to hijack some of my competitors' strategies, right? So here you could go in and then select, maybe I want to save this information and I want to save some of these keywords, maybe not all of these keywords, right? Because even though they're ranking number one for this, there's not really any search volume at all. So let's say that I just wanted to save these three. I could click add to my list and go into my keywords folder that's all across your Helium 10 account and just select that folder and it will be added there for your use across the platform. So again, that's going to be in tools inside my list keywords. At any point, if you want to um, select any of the, this information that does go across the board for all of these tabs. So feel free to create your own folders, whether that be for organic, sponsored. If you want to take a look at what this looks like, we were only looking at last month. It's probably why that shared keywords um, data didn't load. But let's go into uh, last six months and give it a second here. While we wait for that to fetch data, what you're looking at at the bottom, which is one of the last things I'll cover for this segment for this month, is going to be the heat map. So this is going to take a look at ranking for the top valued keywords that these ASINs are ranking for and how they've changed month by month. So as I click the drop down icon, um, this is going to showcase 
from June all the way to December, how that ranking has changed. So ranking is set in stone, but let's say I wanted to not see the search volume. I would be able to just move that into none and you will be able to take a closer look at simply the rank. The red highlighted ones are the ones when it dropped month by month, but if it's green, then it has increased. At any point, let's say that you wanted to take a look at a different time frame, you would be able to go into, let's say, only the last three months instead of the last six months. You'll see that the information changes based off what you've inputted here. So now it's going to show you um, based off of week for the last three months. So you have a lot more in depth uh, for this specific niche as you were taking a look at it. Now, what I did want to ask you guys, because it's December and when we were taking a look at the revenue charts, right, you saw that it was sort of on a decline, which means that as we enter Q1, we're going to be doing a different market. So let me know in the chat section, which market are you interested in us doing for this next segment when the January Bigger Better launch arrives? With that, I'm going to pass it back to Bradley. All right. So if you guys want to get some information, if you're a larger seller, you know, again, this is not for you. If you just started selling on Amazon, um, you know, I'll be honest with you. Don't, don't waste your time for trying to get a demo on this um, because, you know, you're not ready for it yet. Uh, it's a great goal to have to be ready for this. But but if you've been selling on Amazon for a while, you know, you're doing over a, a few million dollars of sales a year. If you're not using Market Tracker 360, you could be leaving money on the table with the level of analytics that you could be seeing. So uh, hit this QR code right here, guys, that you see in the uh, uh, on the page and uh, schedule a free demo for yourself. Again, this is for larger sellers only. Uh, you can either hit this uh, QR code or you can go to helium10.com forward slash MT360. Um, and uh, you, you have any uh, teasers for us, uh, Shivali, on what's coming? Uh, in the yeah, I'm actually really excited to announce that there is eventually going to be atomic integration with this, which is amazing, right? Because now you not only have the in-depth product analysis pages that you can compare multiple ASINs with, you can see all those valued keywords that are unique and shared, which by the way, I know I mentioned I was going to show you guys that shared keywords function and it did load for the last six months. So that the only reason that didn't load is because it needed a little bit more time to log that back end data information since we were only looking at that singular month. But yes, there is atomic integration coming alongside a lot of really other cool features. So Again, if this is for you, if you fit the criteria that Bradley was just stating, then make sure that you request a demo by visiting that link or using that QR code that's on that PowerPoint to get a demo. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Now, speaking of Adtomic and PPC, you know, how many of you, like especially now in Q4, have maybe found it difficult to know when your PPC budget is getting used up unless you're like logging into Seller Central? Well, for those of you who are doing other stuff in Helium 10, you know, we, we've now made it a little bit easier. So now you have, those of you using Atomic, you might have noticed this already. Uh, if you're using Atomic to manage your PPC, which I highly recommend everybody here does, um, you're going to see some new columns here in your ad manager that shows uh, what your daily budget is and then how much you've used it. It's updated every hour. And so like I took this screenshot probably like at like three in the morning or something. That's why it looks like nothing has been used up. But, you know, some of you might not even be realizing, especially in the in the in Q4, that you're out of budget on some of your campaigns, like by the morning or by early afternoon. And then, you know, you know what that means? That means your your competitors are just taking over all the sponsored slots that, that you would normally be getting. So this is just a, a quick little addition to Adtomic that is very helpful. Uh, I found it helpful. I use Atomic for all. I, I run about 250 PPC campaigns myself. 100% of them, I use uh, Atomic uh, for it. So uh, I was really happy to see this uh, update. Um, what about, uh, you know, inventory numbers? You know, like you guys know uh, inventory in Q4. How, okay, I, I'm going to put it out there. This is not all fun and games here, but we have some like doom and gloom as well, you know, because I, I like to keep it real. How many of you guys have been kind of screwed in Q4 because Amazon like uh, kind of shut down how many units you can send because of the uh, different size limitations. Let me know in the chat who here was affected by that, where all of a sudden you wanted to send some inventory into Amazon. L look at Alan in all caps. Yes, it just happened to me. Like, oh, Megan, uh, even Carrie uh, had that. All right. Um, 
Dominic, it didn't happen. All right, good. So a lot of you guys, this happened to. I, I see <laughs> Adam says, don't get me started <laughs> in all caps. So, you know, inventory, guys, the, our numbers is something that is that is important, right? So it's something that we can't just like, hey, I'm just going to send a million units to Amazon and I never have to worry at all about my inventory. It's something that we should be be looking at and, and thinking about. Um, So now I inside of our inventory levels, this is a, a tool that we have inside of profits guys if you go there you're going to see a little bit uh so, some new things that are on there because keep it in mind that inventory should be always top of mind now don't get this confused with we have an entire inventory management tool at helium 10 called inventory management of course you guys should be using that but this this is something that's now inside of our profits tool and like for example if you were to click on uh one of your products like you guys can see here and then you could actually see the historical inventory and this is something that i was looking at earlier because I'm like, what, what the heck happened? Why is my listing, you know, not showing up? Why is my listing not showing up um, as delivers before Christmas, right? And then you could see what happened here historically. All of a sudden, as of December 10th, a hundred percent of my inventory went to reserve status. You guys see that here? How there's on the December 10th, it went to, uh, it's all blue. Like I might not have known when that happened or or why it happened, but. I went later then into my managed inventory in Seller Central and like found out that Amazon put everything into reserved status. But if I didn't know that, right? If I didn't catch that right away, I can now use this tool to go back and see what's been going on day by day with my inventory. Like each day, how many have I had available? When did my inbound shipments actually come to available or when did it go to reserve? Like, so there's all these new things that you can now, you know, kind of uh, think about. You see this other uh, tab here. We've got the inventory um, heat map, right? Now I'm like, what in the world? Why are all of the coffin shelves in Arizona and the only little bits like in other parts of the country? So, you know, maybe you didn't realize that Amazon is storing all of your products in a certain geographical location. Well, this is nothing new to Helium 10. You guys have had access to inventory heat maps, but now it's inside of this other tool in profits as well as the sales heat maps. As you can see where our, uh, people buying coffin shelves. Uh, I, I, I'd like to think that anybody in Montana seems to be very sane in that nobody in Montana is buying a shelf shaped like a coffin. So hats off to you, Bozeman, people living in Bozeman, Montana, who are not buying coffin shelves and North and South Dakota. But Southern California, we like to keep it weird. So there's hundreds of people with coffin shelves, as you guys can uh, see here. Um, so now let's go ahead and go back to Carrie with some more strategies. All right. So this is actually one of my favorite strategies. I don't know how many people know about this, but maybe you put it in the chat. If you've actually seen this on the dashboard, we have um, a thing where you can find product ideas based on what's trending on Pinterest. And if you are log in, logged into your Helium 10 dashboard and you scroll down a little bit, you can actually see this Pinterest trend finder. I'm curious to know if anyone's used this before, if you put it, put it in the chat to see if, uh, I'd love to see if anyone's used it, but, um, so this is a really cool way to find things that are trending. So I did this one very recently. So you can see, obviously Christmas things are, are trending. It's a great way to find product ideas. Okay. So I found, you know, indoor Christmas decorations, uh, was trending and you can actually click through that, that, uh, that screen multiple times until you find something. And usually I just kind of keep clicking through it until I find something, then I'll open it up. And what you can do is kind of expand and open it up in Pinterest. And it'll show you a lot of really cool details. And as you can see right now, um, the trend is going up with Christmas decor, obviously, but you can find other products that aren't necessarily seasonal, but you'll see them trending up. So it's a really good way to find things that are trending and up and coming. Uh, so you can also scroll down. Um, it'll show you demographics, which I don't have a screenshot of, but then it'll also show you popular pins. And what you can do is you can click on those popular pins and you can actually see more um, blog posts or, you know, all these different pins that's, that are going to show you a bunch of different ideas. So if you go to the next uh, next screen, we can actually see, I don't know, yeah, there we go. So I found a blog that was like uh, 22 plus apartment Christmas decor to copy in uh, 2020. So all these little ones and also how to decorate a small space for the holidays. So 
what you can do is you can click on these blogs. You'll see a bunch of product ideas. You can see, you know, how competitive they are, if they're trending. Um, there's so many ideas. There's hundreds and hundreds of ideas. Um, something else I do is I actually take this same, you know, I'll take the same phrase and I'll search it in, uh, in TikTok and I'll look at the creator videos. There's a bunch of influencer videos. They'll go and show you like, maybe they'll do a whole apartment tour and they'll show you what they have in their apartment. So that gives you even more ideas of what you can sell. So um, there's so many potential opportunities um, by just kind of going down the rabbit hole. Um, I clicked on one of those blogs. I found this, you know, festive Bohemian Garland. And that's one that I was like, oh, maybe I can take a look at that. Um, I know it's it's trending. So um, you can find all kinds of cool uh, different product ideas by using Pinterest. And um, it's one of my favorite ways to brainstorm and really get the creative juices going. So if you feel like you're in a slump and you want to just, you know, do something where you can kind of take a look and get some creative ideas, use the Pinterest trend finder. It's on the Helium 10 dashboard and it's really easy to use. All right. One thing, guys, is that we all, we also do a, a secondary version of this BBL on our podcast. Like next Tuesday, you'll see another recap uh, with some of these things that we're going over in a different strategy. And I had some actual extra. So we had, or Carrie had some extra strategy. And we had some extra strategies that we're going to show, but we're going to skip over these. I'm going to save those for the podcast version because I wanted to make sure we have enough time. Uh, Carrie has invited a, a real life Amazon seller. I, I, I love to call the ones out there who are, you know, they're influencers. Um, they don't work for agencies. They're not trying to sign you up, but they're just what I call average Joe's and average uh, Sally. So I'm going to actually go off of a screen share here. Um, or you, you didn't have a slide for her, did you, Carrie? No. Uh, okay, we, perfect. So I'm going to go off of the screen share here. And, and Gina, if you could uh, come on screen here, and uh, we wanted to ask hey. you some some questions. How's it going, Gina? It's going okay. Can you hear me okay? You can see and hear you just fine. So, so Carrie. Uh, has has you know talks to Gina sometimes she's on our elite calls and so that's how we got to know her. Uh, Carrie, why, why don't you you know help uh, introduce Gina to our audience? Yeah, so I I think I've known Gina now for like a year and a half, and she's one of our uh, elite members that I just uh, we're always chatting and I'm you know sharing strategies. She's always sharing amazing strategies, so she's one of our kind of um, solid elite members that a lot of people go to to um, ask questions. She's always you know really implementing strategies that come up, so she's not just one of those people who comes to webinars and learns. She actually implements stuff and gives feedback. So I'm really excited to talk with you today, Gina, because I I just um, I've loved you know sharing ideas with you over the past year and a half and just all the insights that you bring to the table in our elite round tables. So, um, but if you want to, I don't know if you want to tell a little bit about your background, that would be a great way to start. Um, sure. So I've kind of been in e-commerce for about 23 years. I started out in, in the um, sporting goods space and moved to a CPG brand over that 23 years and then decided I wanted to start my own business and started doing all the research that everybody else needs to do to sell on Amazon. And that's where Helium 10 came in. So it's kind of the short and sweet. Yeah. So when, when was it exactly that you started selling on Amazon? Um, for my own brand, it was the beginning of 2020. So April, um, in my previous life, we'd been selling either the entire catalog or I actually launched our CPG brands, um, a whole brand on Amazon. So it's, it's been a little while, but my own brand since 2020. Okay. And, uh, is that, is that when you started using helium 10 tools or did you start using them a little bit after that? Um, no, it was right then. So when I was doing all the research of actually what, um, niche I wanted to be in, um, kind of what space was going to be profitable and competition, that's where I started with helium 10. I actually, um, funny story is I, I signed up for jungle scout first and then called them and said, Nope, I want to cancel. Cause I found you guys. And I was like, oh, okay, I, I think I found the better tool. So since April, I guess that was when I started um, with the uh, free version. And then August is when I went to the paid version that was platinum, I think. Um, it was kind of a stair step. So I started at platinum. Um, I went to diamond like, I don't know, five months later and then elite um, about 10 months later after I kind of got my feet under me. Yeah. And that could, that, that just goes to show, you know, you can still launch products. Some people think it's too late, but 20, 2020 was only two years ago and you're doing great. So that's pretty awesome. So um, what is the tool that you use most in your business? What's like your favorite go-to that you? Um, I think so there, it's kind of a evolution, I think, with Helium 10. And when you first start, like I think you're like I went through Freedom Ticket and Black Box and Cerebro and everything, you know, to kind of figure out where I wanted to be. Um, then I moved to a keyword tracker and magnet um, and a follow up tool. So that was one like I use it, but it's in the background. So I don't realize that I use it every day. So that's one that 
probably as you, most use, I just don't have anything to do with it other than to make sure everything's running smoothly. And then now as you, you get bigger and start to have more strategies, you know, I'm using Atomic, um, checking things on profits, market tracker, keeping up with competition. So there's a lot of like tools that you use a lot and then fre uh, infrequently. So periodically might be index checker. If you know, I feel like my volume has gone down, I might go to index checker or the anomaly tool and see like, you know, what's going on here. Um, and then like refund genie, um, things like that, where you don't do it every day, you do it maybe once a month or something like that. So there's, you know, depending on the week, there's a different tool for me that, that I think um, I use the most. What, what is your like biggest uh, win and loss this year? Would you say, you know, like the, the, the coolest thing that happened to you, like maybe that was unexpected. Um, and on the flip side, what's the worst thing that happened to you on Amazon? Cause we, we, like I said, we keep it real here. Like we don't want to make it seem like Amazon <laughs> is, is all rainbows and unicorns here. So what's your biggest uh, yeah. W and L? Um, I'll start with probably the L is that um, just like everybody's an ASIN got taken down on the Thursday of Black Friday. So uh, right before Black Friday, it was Thanksgiving and I'm sitting at the table and my phone goes off and I'm like, what is going on? And my ASIN, my, my number one ASIN got taken down. I've got 10 ASINs. So my number one went down and I missed all of Black Friday sales, uh, not this past year, but the year before. And I mean, it was like suppressed or what, what, what happened? Um, it went into um, a, a, a status where they pulled it down and suppressed it because it was prohibited. But, you know, this was the second time that it had happened. And I think what had happened is um, uh, some bad players put some stuff on my listing mm. and, and put ingredients that are not even in it. I think they put the they copied and pasted all the prohibited ingredients from the page and then put them on my listing and got suppressed. And I think they went back in and took it down. So since how did you then, get it back? Um, through uh, trials of POAs and, and, and sending in all the documentation that they asked me for, um, it took about three days, um, mainly because it was a holiday. I mean, you know, it's a holiday in the United States, not everywhere, but it was just hard to get somebody to, to look and tell me what I needed to do. And it just, it just took that long. Um, and plus for me, you know, I'm, I was on holiday too. So it wasn't like I'm sitting at my desk all day waiting for something to happen. Um, and the biggest win, um, I think as far as like um, just my entire brand. So the, the approach that I took from it was I wanted to have a brand approach, not just, you know, one product that is going to be better than anybody in this one niche in this one little space. Um, I wanted to be able to increase average order uh, cart value by having additional things that might be interesting in my niche. Um, and also for the times where uh, you have an ASIN go down, you have other products to, to come up. And um, the, the number one win I would say for this year is, and Carrie will appreciate this, is probably Walmart. Um, so the tools that helped with, with me um, on Amazon, also Helium 10 started launching things on Walmart. And I went from, um, I think it was like $6,000 in sales all of last year to like 33,000 this year. And like, that was a big surprise. And to me, that's kind of, you know, the diversifying your portfolio. So some happens on Amazon, you still have other channels that can, you can sell your products on aside from my own website. So I was, I think those are probably the two wins for me. That's awesome. You got a, any, um, one last question maybe for her, um, Carrie. Um, I wanted to ask too, if, if there's been any, um, bigger, better launch tools that we've launched in the past few months that you like that have been kind of a game changer or impacted you. Cause I know there's some pretty cool ones, but wanted to see if you had because I know you, you're really diligent about really learning the tools and getting to implement these things. So I thought this was a good one for you. Yeah, it's kind of a blessing and a curse, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say probably anything and everything to do with PPC, um, including where you guys are now um, doing the suggested PPC bid. Um, I'm really kind of revamping and um, honing down my PPC, whether it's uh, Amazon, Walmart, or Google for that matter. Um, and the tools that you guys have between um, Atomic, um, the scheduling, um, I'll throw one that's not in there, but the sales heat mat actually helped me on my PPC for Google, where I pulled where I was selling the most and I adjusted all my PPC campaigns and tested um, really kind of targeting certain um, counties and saying, I, I have smaller budget, so I'm just going to advertise in those places where all of my sales are happening. And then once it grows and I can expand, obviously. Um, and then all the Walmart counterparts. So um, keyword tracking on Walmart helped with what I was going to launch on PPC, um, what, what I was going to bid for the keywords. Um, but the, I would say everything around probably um, Atomic and, and PPC is what I've enjoyed probably this, this, this last two quarters, I guess, where I focused on PPC. Awesome. Awesome. Well, 
Gina, con- congrats with all of your success. It- it's been great to see you uh, grow, you know, since I've known you. Um, and, you know, here's to a great 2023. Thank you. I appreciate all you guys' help. I mean, you guys are always available and, and Carrie, she's always answering questions for me. So, you know, I feel like I'm not alone, even though I'm alone in this room most of the day working and at night. Um, but there's been a lot of people, especially in elite, that reach out to help. And it's kind of a good group of people to help everybody be successful. So anywhere that I can help, I'm glad and, and people are, are returning the favor. So thank, awesome. thank you. Hey, you've already motivated somebody. Uh, v- v- Victoria just said in the chat, I'm feeling motivated. Thank you uh, to you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Gina, th- thanks so much. Uh, and uh, we're, we're definitely going to bring you back on in the future. And we would love to see your progress. And hopefully the bad players don't shut you down anymore. But, guys, this yeah. is, you know, this is something that could happen uh, to to any Amazon seller. But here's the point. I hope you took away from this. She didn't just, like, give up and say, OK, I'm going to quit. She she fixed the problem and now she's uh, crushing. So thanks a lot, uh, Carrie and Gina, for coming on here. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to share my screen again. I want to share uh, a page with you guys. Uh, a lot of the uh, strategies that we're going over here, um, we we went over it like in a special podcast episode. So hopefully you guys are subscribed to the podcast. On the left-hand side, if you've got an iPhone, I want you to, to hit that QR code and it's going to load up this page that you see in the middle there and then hit the button, listen on Apple Podcasts. All right, so just go ahead and do that right now. If you have an iPhone on the right side, if you've got another kind of phone or use Spotify, hit that QR code. And then make sure to hit following on Spotify. But if you've got an iPhone, it's best on Apple Podcasts. So hit listen on Apple Podcasts and then subscribe to it and download. And then what you want to do is after this, um, after this workshop, I want you guys to go to episode 402 where we give a lot of product research uh, strategies right there. All right. So episode 402. Listen to that right after this, but hit subscribe so you can get the, uh, the you can download these right away. If to throw in the chat, how many people are currently listening to the podcast and listen to it? You know, you don't have to listen to every episode, but how many people listen to at least maybe one episode a week or every couple of weeks? We got Ward, uh, Svelina, Chad, Melissa, Ahmed, uh, Elena. All right, everybody. Excellent, excellent. All right. So um, we have them on the podcast and we have them on YouTube as well. Somebody asked if we have them on YouTube. All right. So guys, get some more free strategies afterwards. Now I'm going to skip a couple of these strategies. Like I said, I'm actually going to give some of these in the podcast. And let me just skip to this one that uh, Shivali had prepared here that was super cool. And this is about dimensional changes on Amazon. What is this about, uh, Shivali? So this is for alerts. Now, when you are in the full swing of holiday season, you're going to want to stay on top of any changes that are really happening to your listing because it can really affect your ranking, right? So that can include dimensional things, weight, height, length. Um, it can have be something like your product is all, all of a sudden an adult product, or maybe there's been a category change or there's reviews added. There's just a number of things. Or maybe you get suppressed like happened to Gina. Yes, for Black Friday, right? So you will want to stay on top of those things. And to be able to do that, especially when you have a number of products um, or there's so many different variables that you want to stay on top of, something like alerts is really helpful where you have now that 24-hour watch on your product and you get notified through email, through text, through push notifications in your mobile app constantly of what's changing and what you can change it back to. What do I mean by what can you change it back to? Well, we take photos of your listing in mobile and desktop version. So that way you are always in the know of what kind of change happened and what to change it back to. Now, what I have screenshotted here, the top half of that is going to be a example, right? We have the Manny's Mysterious Oddities black coffin shelf. And I actually tweaked the numbers for dimensions a little bit. Hopefully you can take a look at those numbers. I changed it from nine by nine by eight to nine by nine by nine. And what this did is it severely took the net profit and changed it. So you went from $5.41 net to 12 cents. That is a drastic drop. Now imagine if you're selling 20 units a day and all of a sudden you have Amazon go in, remeasure your product for some reason. Or maybe somebody hijacks your listing and something happens, right? What happens when you have the dimension change and all that money now is off the table? You want to stay on top of it, right? You will want to have alerts on for products. So make sure that you go into tools and toggle on. So the bottom half of this slide, you have a little green icon. Uh, in the top right hand side, and you'll just want to make sure that it's on for the products that you want to try. You, you know, I want everybody to do that right now. Anybody who is on their computer right now, um, 
doesn't matter if you're on a Mac or PC or whatever, just open up a new window outside of this Zoom um, and, and go to Helium 10 and then hit the alerts tool. And then like she said, right there uh, on the on your top SKUs, you know, fi find your top SKUs and make sure that you have that green button. That's, I don't know if you guys can see my arrow, but this is the one that she just referred to. Make sure it says on. I want everybody right now who who might not be sh positive if, if their alerts are on to go in there and, and hit that on button to make sure that you are being notified because this is huge, guys. Like, tell me, uh, tell me, let me know in the chat. Those are the rest of you who aren't doing this. If you're if you're in the process of starting your alerts, you know, keep doing that. But the rest of you guys who have had alerts on, how many of you have seen Amazon change your dimensions like this, where all of a sudden they say, "Nope, this package is longer than than it really is." Have you have you guys ever had those alerts or noticed just on your own, even without alerts, that Amazon went in and changed your dimensions or changed your title? Uh, Yana, Oded, um, hey, is that the Yana that I know? Oded is, uh, I love seeing familiar names here. How's it going, Oded? K, there's my buddy K there. Uh, we missed the adult alert. The adult alert should be there still, uh, K. Getting, yeah, there's, there should be still an adult classification alert um, there. And uh, Dominic says, once a week. Good grief, that happens to, uh, that happens to, to him once a week. So guys, this is real life. This, this happens. Um, so make sure to, to, to activate this so that you know when it happens and you can take action. Thank you for sharing that, Shivali. Now, speaking of alerts, we actually have something um, new. Russ says, which tool is the alerts on? It's That's the name of the tool. It's, it's its own tool, alerts. All right, now we incorporate alerts into some of our other tools, but right now I'm just talking about the actual alerts tool. So you just hit the drop down menu and, and go to alerts. Now, we actually have another update that just happened. It's called Alerts Digest. So there's a lot of things that Shivali was mentioning that you can get alerted on. You know, she mentioned some of them and you could see some of the other ones here. Now, there are some things that are very critical. You want to hop on it right away. You know, like if your listing is suppressed or your main image got changed, you want that probably to be an email or even a text notification that you get instantly. But there are other things that maybe you kind of want to keep, um, you know, seeing like, you know, what, or keep aware of what's going on. Like you get a new five-star review or, or maybe, you know, um, price change, you know, whatever. But if you're like, you know what, I really don't want to get a text message or an email every single time this happens. I just kind of want, uh, want to update. Well, now starting uh, early next week, you're going to be able to get these digest for alerts where you can say, hey, this one, I want to be immediate one, one by one email for this. But, but this main image change, maybe the, I, I just know I, I'm doing a split test, you know, so like I'm obviously changing my image all the time. I don't need to know every time this happens. Well, you can like select maybe daily for that. And then what's going to happen is daily, you'll just get one email for all of the changes that happen in that, you know, for that category. So it'll lessen the number of notifications that you have. All right. So guys, go into your alert settings and you'll now be able to uh, do this. Now, I've got a question uh, for you guys out there. This is this is a really cool uh, announcement that we're going to make. But just in general, we're we're. we're Get ready with your keyboard, guys. This is going to be an interactive session right here. How many people have noticed how different page one looks in 2022? Like as far as all of the different sponsor placements and things, it seems like there's all these new widgets that pop up. You guys notice that? All right, take a look at this screen right now. Who can tell me the two different kinds of search results you see here? This is like at the top of the page usually. What's that called at the top? This is like Amazon 101 now. Amazon pop quiz. What are what is that called? This this, this section up here. What is this, guys? Ward's got it. Ding 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 ding. Alicia's got it. Sponsored brand. Like this is like a sponsored brand that used to be called like headline ads, right? So there's sponsored brand. Now what, what about what about this here? What are these? What is this section here? Who can tell me? Yes, everybody's putting SP top of search sponsored products. Ward says. Absolutely. So, all right. So right here at the top, first of all, th this is like a whole screenshot, guys. This is a whole screen I took. What don't you see here? <laughs> In the whole screen, unless I would scroll down, what don't you see here? Organic. Daniel says organic. Yana says organic. Chad. Yes. There's not even any organic here. So this is like the new normal. All right. Take a look at this now. Um, anybody, uh, th this is now I've scrolled down the page a little bit on collagen peptides. Does anybody see any organic placements yet? Any organic here? 
a lot of people are saying there's organic here. No, there's no organic here. There is not one organic. What is this called? Anybody know? These are sponsored ads, but it's called the highly rated sponsored ads. All right. This is the high. Anybody seen this on the search? How many people have seen this on the search results of your uh, keyword? Like your main keywords. Farouk says this. John. Alicia hasn't noticed it. Kay has hands up. Leandro. Okay. Uh, who can tell me what this is? It's kind of hard to say since this is, um, you know, since this is a, a still picture here. That should give be a giveaway of my hint here. Who knows what this is? Joey's got it. Joey's got it. This is a sponsored video ad. Sponsored brand video ad right here. All right. So again, these are new sections that we see. All right. Let's go to the next one. How many people have seen this? What do you guys see here? This is a different page. Obviously, this is not the collagen peptide search. This is another sponsored ad kind of section here. Uh, products that have Amazon's choice. All right. Product. This is another widget. This one, like Coffin Shelf doesn't have this. All right. Uh, Egg Tray doesn't have this. Anybody have a keyword that they're selling on where this, like this Amazon's choice widget comes up? Probably not as many as the others. Anybody out there? Oh, Alicia's got it. Yana's got it. Okay. All right, cool. Now, what do you see here for the first time today? What do you see here at the bottom for the first time that I, I have this on here? Organic uh, says K. Yes, exactly. Exactly. This is our first organic one of the day. The more results. All right. I got more for you guys. How about this? Anybody seen this? Are these organic placements, guys? Nope. Yana says, nope. Yep, you guys are correct. This is not organic either. This is a different uh, widget called Trending Now. All right? A lot. I don't have, the, again, I don't have this in Coffin Shelf. I have to go to Socks to find this, but maybe you guys are selling in the category that has this. All right? It keeps going. How, how about this? Anybody seen this one? What is this one called? Yeah, a lot. Of, Dominic hasn't seen this one. Christopher hasn't seen this one. Yeah, top rated from our brands. This is now popping up in a lot of categories. Like, like this isn't even a big category here. These like uh, these like little, I don't know, even know what you would call these things. Um, wall decor, inspirational posts kind of things. You know, now there's another kind of uh, thing that's coming up. Top rated from our brands. All right. What about here? Any Anything new you guys see here that we haven't shown today? What is this one called? The editorial recommendations. This is, uh, there used to be a lot more of these. There's not that many of these, but this is another section that is coming up in these search results. And then here's the organic. So guys, we just went over so many different kind of sponsors and other kinds of placements. So historically, you know, like sometimes we just worry about our organic keyword rank, right? Which is absolutely important. Um, sometimes we, we, we worry about our sponsored product rank, which is absolutely important. But these really don't tell the full picture nowadays and, and, and probably going to be the same in 2023. So, so, you know, wouldn't it be nice to know like who and what is coming up in the search results? So we're launching over the next few months uh, this new tool got inside or this new function of Cerebro, guys, called Traffic Analysis. So, you know, as with a lot of our tools, we roll this out first to Elite, just to, like I said before, to make sure, you know, everything's going uh, okay. And um, now in the future, you know, will this be to Diamond and Platinum? We'll see. But right now, um, in the next few days, Elite members are going to start to be able to play with this to, to give us feedback on, on this. And, and hopefully, you know, later, you know, we can release it to more people. But guys, this is game changing as it's, we're now tracking all of these different um, placements on page one. Amazon recommended. That's already what we've been doing. Uh, you know, organic. We've already been doing that. Sponsored. We've already been doing that. But now the new ones: editorial recommendations, Amazon's choice keyword placement, highly rated keyword, sponsored brand header keyword, a uh, sponsored brand video keywords, top rated for our brands, trending now. So if we show that this has a, a product that you're putting into Cerebro, gets some kind of page one placement for these little widgets here you are now going to see it in the results of Cerebra. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. 
Like, for example, I did a filter here for the ones that have editorial recommendations. So look here. Now I know that for protein bars, EBT eligible for whatever uh, product I had put in here, it's actually showing up organic, sponsored, Amazon recommended highly rated keyword and editorial recommendations. So this product is crushing it like for their, for their page one placement um, right there, guys. So this is super, super cool uh, of, of a new feature that elite members like Gina are going to be able to play with and, and break. Like I noticed Jake hasn't been on here. Jake's usually the elite member who likes to break everything. So, so he must not be on the call today, but if you're an elite member, uh, be, uh, mindful of when I make the announcement in our Facebook group of when this product is released so that you guys can start playing with this. And then hopefully, like I said, I'm not sure, but later, you know, we'll see about rolling it out to other plans once we got this uh, all locked down. But who's excited about potentially using this tool and understanding like how your product, where your product is showing up for uh, in different pages and maybe just just in general, like which keywords have which widgets? You know, like, like that editorial recommendations does not come up on every page, you know, that Amazon's choice does not come up on every page. Now you're going to have visibility on it. Um, and hopefully in Europe, uh, we'll, we'll have it now. Europe obviously is different. You know, they, it's not, it's not the same kind of widgets, so it'll be a little bit of, of a different process, um, for it. So guys, this is super cool. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, like I said, elite members can use this. I'm not trying to sell you guys elite membership. Guess what? You want to pay right now to be an elite. You can't elite is closed. Um, make sure guys, whenever we do open up elite, you jump on it because it's usually only open for like an average of like 2% of the year or 1%, not even 2%, probably like 1% of the year almost that, that that's open. So it's a very limited time whenever we open up elite so that you, you can be some of the ones who, um, who, uh, you know, who can take advantage of being the first to use our tools. One other uh, thing that we're working on right now that's coming soon, and this is also going to be for Diamond members. If you guys have the brand analytics um, uh, for the brand registered members, you are now going to see this new column called SFR, which stands for search frequency rank. And this just shows like what, uh, as of the last week, what place this keyword had in the overall like top million or 2 million keywords. Like what was the most search? So like, this keyword here, AA batteries, was just a misspelling, was the 186,000 most searched thing for last week. So that's a new that's a new column that you're going to start seeing uh, across the board as well. So guys, um, or or maybe you know, uh, Carrie, can can you let us know how people can request these features here? Yeah. So basically, up at the top, when you're in the actual app itself, or when you're logged into Helium 10. Go up to that little question mark and hit the question mark and click on share your ideas, uh, request new features. You could, that's how you can give your feedback right there. Yes, I absolutely. All right. And then, um, Shivali, what can they see if they hit this QR code here? So this QR code is great for if you want to just get previews for the product releases that are happening, our bigger, better launches are exactly what that is here for. And so you will be able to view all of those previous webinar webinars that we have done, as well as any monthly updates that are happening to the tools and strategies that we have. Awesome. Awesome. Now we have one uh, more poll I wanted to uh, throw up here. Uh, William, if you could just throw that up on the screen, uh, because I forgot what it was actually. <laughs> You see it there, William, the one we uh, cue the Jeopardy music right now. There we go. All right. I, I want to know about goals, guys. What's your goals in 2023? What, what subjects, you know, I know it's kind of tough to pick one, but if you were to pick one of these, what do you really want to kind of crush uh, and learn about more and, and level up on in your knowledge? Amazon PPC, by the way, guys, uh, how many people here? Let me know in the chat who are diamond and above, or actually we had opened it up to platinum members too for a while. Uh, how many people went through our PPC Academy that uh, Vince and Nina created for Helium 10 members? Anybody do a PPC Academy? If you're a diamond member, you still have access to it, but you could before if you're a platinum when we launch it. Christopher did, uh, Ximena, Vladimir loves it. Excellent, excellent. All right, guys, make sure to to you know level up uh, your knowledge on PPC by doing that. So that was what won here. It looks like uh, number two was product research. Number three, listing optimization. And um, great. 
well, for everybody who who actually submitted something there, hats off to you because that means you you definitely want to get better and level up your Amazon game. So let's go ahead and uh, I want to let you guys know uh, when is the next one, uh, Shivali? When is our next BBL? Our next BBL is on January 26th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So the same time that it was today, but on January 26th, and that is a Thursday. And it will be 2023, I promise. It's not going to be 2022. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the, that's the latest addition to Helium 10. We are going back to the future, and we are time <laughs> yeah. traveling um, on this. So that's pretty pretty crazy there. Uh, it was Eagle Eye Shivali. I didn't even notice yes. that. I didn't notice that either. And I looked through these multiple times. <laughs> yep, right. <laughs> All right. So Thursday, January 26th. So again, uh, a couple upcoming things, guys. Um, make sure to go back, like I said, now to the Series Sellers podcast and listen to that episode 402 to get some more product research strategies. I'm going to go even more in depth on some of the things that we talked about today, but but from the viewpoint of how can you use these strategies that Carrie and Shivali gave and the new features, how you can actually apply it to your business. A little bit different vibe is how I do the BBL episode in um you know for the podcast and so that's actually going to be coming out next tuesday and don't forget uh for those of you spanish and german speakers we also have the bbl done uh two weeks from now every month on our serious sellers podcast auf deutsch and serious sellers podcast en espanol podcast so you'll be able to if, if those if you're more comfortable in those languages you'll be able to 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 catch this bbl episode uh in those languages just subscribe on the same app that you use to listen to to a regular series sellers podcast, find the Deutsch and the Espanol versions as well. So thank you guys so much. Um, this has been a really killer 2022 for a lot of us. We've had ups, we've had downs, you know, just like Gina, you know, talk about, but at the end of the day, I hope all of you guys are crushing it, uh, on, uh, in your sales this year. And then here's to a great 2023. So see you guys later. <laughs>